So it is rumored that this week, the first week of August, Joe Biden will actually pull the trigger and decide who to get married to. Or in this case, pick a vice presidential candidate. Now, there's a number of names that have been popped up, but I'm going to give you through the seven names that I think will be bridesmaids, two that I think could be a wild card, and one that will ultimately be deciding who will be the person who will, if he wins, be sitting at a naval location down the street. My name is Frank Kutsakria. Like and subscribe, hate and comment. Now, I'm going to go over the first two names that will definitely not be winning anything. The first is somebody who's been getting way too much press lately. Her name is Karen Bass. She is the congresswoman from California, head of the Congressional Black Caucus, a devout lover of Fidel Castro, and a Scientologist sympathizer. Seriously. There is no reason why she should be on this list. And it also proves that when you live in a gerrymandered district and have only won elections through gerrymandering, you've never had to try to win a vote from the other side, your answers can be very weird and very off script. And by the way, the Castro loving wasn't just when she was a youth in 1991, but upon his death in 2016. Now you may be thinking, what's the big deal? Biden's gonna win anyways. Okay, tell that to President Dukakis, President Hillary Clinton, and President Richard Nixon in 1960. Just because you have a lead 90 days out doesn't mean that you have a lead when it counts. And remember, you do have to win states, not just the most votes. Or President Gore would have something to say about that. Now, the other person who should never be in this discussion, and it's surprising that she was ever in the discussion, is one Miss... Elizabeth Warren, the senator from Massachusetts, besides being 71 years old, white, when of course she wasn't really using white privilege to say that she was an Indian, is way too progressive and quite frankly, isn't exactly electable. Even in 2012, she struggled to win the Senate seat in Massachusetts, underperforming Barack Obama. And before you say, well, you know, she was running against an incumbent, that is true. Barack Obama was running against the former popular governor of the state. So, yeah, should not be on this list. And at 71 years old, do you really want somebody who's that close to Joe Biden's age? I mean, she would be the oldest elected vice president ever, passing one Mr. Let me look at my stat, Joe Biden. And Joe Biden, actually, she would be older than him in his second term, not just his first term. So now the other bridesmaids, the first one, is going to be one Miss Susan Rice, the former head of the NSA and UN ambassador. Yeah, she has a lot of behind the scenes um, experience, only 56 years old. She is gonna have some drawbacks. Benghazi is what people will think of, but more importantly, um, the Iraq war behind the scenes as a Democrat being for the war, at least not, at least publicly, uh, still has some residency that's not great to this day and no elected experience. Again, it is very difficult if you've never ran for office to run, especially in such a short term. Uh, it took Donald Trump a long time to figure that out. I'm not talking about his election in 2016, I'm talking about all those false starts in 88, 90, and 2002, 2000, uh, 2012, 16. It takes a while to actually figure it out. Uh, the next person on the list is Tammy Duckworth, the senator from Illinois. Um, of course, uh, only 52 years old, uh, war hero, you can't, can't not say that, um, but uh, if you want to stick it to the president, having somebody born in Thailand who's an Asian may be the way they want to do it, but she's rather too liberal, and usually if somebody is trying to get the job, that's usually a sign that they really don't want the job. The next person who I would think in normal times, especially if you're trying to appeal to the African-American community and uh, the female community and from the state of Florida would be Val Demings. And this is the person that if we would have talked two months ago, I would have said probably the uh, dark horse candidate for Mr. Biden. But as you can see with that beautiful police outfit, questions of Black Lives Matter and being, you know, the former police chief of Orlando who is married to the sheriff of Orange County, that might be too much for her to be allowed onto the ticket. The other reason is an electoral one. 
She ran in 2012 and lost to Dan Webster. The state of Florida Supreme Court decided to gerrymander in an African-American seat, and she has ran. She's not actually had a competitive election that she has been victorious in where you need to get Republican votes. Uh, and that, again, in a close election, that might matter. The other name that a lot of people have been bringing up, which has sort of ended, is Keisha Lance Bottoms. Uh, being the mayor of a major city you think would mean something, it really doesn't. And now that she has COVID, it would be very difficult for her to get over um, with the, the people. There is, you know, obviously you would, at least as of now, you would not want Mr. Biden at 78 years old to be with your uh, vice president. Also, the narrative of the police need to be defunded would come up too often with her as a candidate. The next um, person that I'm going to pop up here that uh, uh, will probably not get a lot of play, but is somebody that I've, I've thought is a wild card from the beginning, is Senator Kristen Simone. She's 44 years old from Arizona, if elected. She would be the first openly uh, bisexual person to be as the vice president. I will do a video later on though and state why that isn't necessarily that big of a deal. Um, she actually would not be the first to be in the um, spectrum of the alphabet in the vice presidency or the presidency. And around the world, um, the United States is actually a little bit farther behind, maybe not with bisexual women, but is a little bit farther behind on accepting of that in a major political office. With that being said, her drawbacks are she actually has a good relationship with Republicans, which means that Democratic enthusiasm will be bad. Besides the fact that she's white, some people may not want to vote for her because she is in the alphabet of the letters. But also, if she is elected, she would be the first non-religious, as she says. She grew up Mormon, which was a drag on Romney back in 2012. Uh, she's now around religious, which is kind of worse than being in a more alternative religion. And Doug Ducey, the governor of Arizona, would make her replacement, meaning that a Republican would pick up that seat. So even though she, you would think on paper, hey, she works on the other side, that would be a drag on said ticket. Uh, I'm now going to pull up a couple of governors that I think should be up there. The second person that I think who doesn't get enough play, who could be a dark horse and could win this, is the governor of New Mexico, Michelle Lujan Grissom. She's 61 years old, first Latina ever elected uh, to the office of governor in this country, and very pro-Israel, which is something that would lose her some progressive cred, but more importantly, open up to some of those moderate voters who are not happy with some of the progressive movement that is out there. The problem is, is that New Mexico is too small of a state. Um, now, yes, Joe Biden came from Delaware, not exactly the electoral bellwether. there. Um, being in New Mexico, you don't have a lot of name recognition. And uh, it is a state that is sort of the anti-Florida, where Florida is a red state that occasionally votes blue. New Mexico is now a blue state that occasionally votes red. Um, now we're down to the, uh, the, the uh, let me see here. I think I did everybody on there. Oh yeah, so now we're down to the final two. Um, I think she would be the ultimate bridesmaid. That's the governor of Michigan. And uh, Gretchen Whitmore, she's 49 years old. Um, she's going to be, the issue again is going to be the stay-at-home orders and COVID-19 in her state. Some believe she's handled it very well. The polls have her in the high 50s in her state for that. But um, two big things. Americans have not really opened up to remarried female politicians. She has five total kids, two from her first marriage and three adopted from her second marriage. Um, but also more relevant to the, they're just going to tax us out of existence. She was pushing for a 50, that's going to be a 45 cent gas tax in the state of Michigan and by far would be the biggest tax in the country. To put that in perspective, the average driver drives 12,000 miles a year, assuming 24 miles to the gallon. That's 500 gallons. You are talking 220-ish dollars at the average Michiganian, Michigander, I don't know what they call themselves, 
would be paying, and that would be disproportionately to the most unable to pay, um, especially when it comes to the most affected groups by COVID. Um, let's face it, white privilege for a lot of people is working from home. If you are a nurse, a delivery person, uh, somebody who's working on a train or a bus, um, somebody who's doing home health care, you're you know working for a lot of those big box companies, more likely than not, you are African American and Latino. You do not generally get to work from home. You are going to be paying the most into this tax. It is one of the reasons why COVID is highest in the minority communities. So that's going to be a real drag on a lot of people to vote for her. So ultimately, who do I think will be the nominee? And I believe that this will be the person who will be announced probably Friday. I think the jobs report is going to be decent on Friday. So Biden would probably, his team would probably want to cut that off, would be Senator Kamala Harris of California. Besides being the senator from our biggest state, she, of course, took down Biden during the primary, at least wounded him. Now, yes, she will have the drawback of not being the best campaigner after that, but um, she is the right age, okay? She is 56 years old. She is from a immigrant family, um, you know, Jamaican and Asian heritage. Um, she's a former DA, which does have drawbacks, right? Val Demings, I think, doesn't get it as being the top comp. And her record as DA was not exactly the greatest in prosecuting cops. But I think people will look over that. And she definitely knows her stuff. Unlike, say where Biden is going to have the senior moment, she could probably come in there and help fix it. It would also be the, the, the history of when you have a serious competitor in getting looped up with somebody who does the attack, kind of puts you down, and you put them as the VP choice, it avalates you very well. Um, Bush 41 is the vice president for Reagan because of that. You could talk about LBJ and JFK. The uh, mixing of the competitors has worked in the past, uh, but we'll see. I believe it'll be Friday because I think the jobs report's gonna be good on Friday and Democrats will wanna cut that down a little bit. Um, and then they'll get the weekend um, to come after it, but we'll see. So like and subscribe and hate comment and we'll see how bad my prediction was, but Kamala Harris, I believe you will be the vice presidential nominee for Mr. Bojo Biden.